Hi there. How's it going? Well, I've made it very clear that there are some mindsets that I find rather deplorable and disgusting. An example of that would be people who have the other version of Trump derangement syndrome, where people think that Trump can do no wrong. Trump is a real patriot. Those sorts of people. Now, I mean, some of those people, when you, you get to know them, they can be really neat people. They can be really great people. They can be very empathetic. But those aspects of their, those Trump-worshipping aspects to their mindsets, I just can't wrap my mind around. I And I find it disgusting. I mean, I can understand people feeling that way about some religious figure, right? Because there's religious context to it. They actually feel there's some sort of godly element to it. But a politician? I mean, politicians are known to be some of the most lying scumbags out there. And you're going to put that much faith and devotion and love towards a politician? That's just crazy to me. That's why, that's why I view some of these people as being not much different than how some Germans viewed Hitler in the 1930s. It just, it just boggles my mind. Having said that, I think people who have those kinds of mindsets, you know, I think it would be nice if those people were able to state their views on mainstream tech platforms. You know, it would be nice. Because if the only place they can state their views are on alter alternative tech platforms, smaller tech platforms, it's just going to form an echo chamber for them. They're not going to get any significant arguments against what they're saying. You know? And that's not a good thing. That just allows the, the division to stew even more. You know, all the polarization. But, you know, these any of these platforms, they have the right to to moderate them how they want. They have the right to run them how they want. Um, I mean, Google is, is a company. It's a publicly, you know, Alphabet is a publicly traded company, but they still get to run their platforms how they want. We're not their customers. We're their users, you know. Yeah, they, they get a lot of information from us. They do a lot of data mining of us. They get some other money that way. They get some other money by us looking at ads, you know. But we're not their customers. We're their users. And so we don't have any absolute rights like we would at, you know, a number of other types of businesses where we are the customers. So, you know, you can't use the uh, bake a cake, uh, bake a gay cake kind of argument uh, when it comes to users. So, <clears throat> but Google... You know, YouTube has decided that they're going to change their community guidelines uh, having to do with the elections. And it concerns me. So, here is from their the YouTube blog site that I'll leave a link to in the description bar. Supporting the 2020 U.S. election. And I'm going to move this over here because uh, most of the information is on the right side. It's on a panel on the right, and I can't really make it any bigger, or the words just, it, it gets ridiculous because the column stays the same size. So, updates to our work supporting the integrity of the 2020 U.S. election. Over the past weeks and months, over your lips and down your throat, over your lips and down your coat. Okay, yeah, old French toast. Over the past weeks and months, we've seen people coming to YouTube to learn more about where and how to vote or learning more about a candidate or an issue. We've seen news organizations grow their audience, and we've seen people turn to YouTube for the latest election results or simply to follow an historic event with the highest voting turnout in over a century in the U.S. And I highlighted an historic because it's rather, I don't know, pretentious. Maybe there's a better word for that, but 
an historic, you know, it, it, that might have been an old way that you could use the word an, but that's not modern English. Um, you know, you put an before a word that starts with a vowel sound. I mean, you can use it on words that start with H as long as the H is silent. An hour, an herb, but not an historic. Anyway, but it is true that we've seen people turn to YouTube for the latest election results or simply to follow. The main thing is to follow a, 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 histor uh, blah, 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 a historic event with the highest voting turnout in over a century in the U.S., Okay, that is true. And there are some Trump supporters who, you know, they'll, they'll say that about, you know, how many people voted for Trump, but they'll deny that about how many people voted for Biden. And, you know, they just won't accept how many people hate Trump. They just won't accept it. Trump is a real patriot, though. Yeah, I mean, whatever. Our main goal going into the election season was to make sure we're connecting people with authoritative information, while also limiting the reach of misinformation and removing harmful content. The work here is ongoing, and we wanted to provide an update. Well, it's good that they're providing this information, but... Removing content that violates our policies. Our community guidelines prohibit spam, scams, or other manipulated media, coordinated influence operations, and any content that seeks to incite violence. Well, that makes sense. Since September, we've terminated over 8,000 channels and thousands of harmful and misleading elections-related videos for violating our existing policies. Over 77% of those removed videos were taken down before they had 100 views. So that means that their, <clears throat> their algorithms were working overtime. What's to guarantee that those algorithms didn't remove content that it shouldn't have? Well, they go on, they say, We also work to make sure that the line between what is removed and what is allowed is drawn in the right place. Our policies prohibit misleading viewers about where and how to vote. Okay, that makes sense. Here's the one that's, that I just, I'm just like, do you really have to do that? We also disallow content alleging widespread fraud or errors changed the outcome of a, of a historical U.S. presidential election. Notice they didn't put an historic this time, right? But yeah, I, I mean... They're free to do to do what they want with their with their with their website, but damn it! I mean, what what are they going to do? Are they going to uh, are they going to prohibit people streaming Trump's speeches? Are they going to prohibit people parroting things that Trump has said? Just. However, in some cases, that has meant allowing controversial views on the outcome or process of counting votes of a current election, as election officials have worked to finalize counts. Yesterday was the safe harbor deadline for the U.S. presidential election, and enough states have certified their election results to determine a president-elect. Given that, we will start removing any piece of content uploaded today or any time after, that misleads people by alleging that widespread fraud or errors changed the outcome of the 2020 U.S. presidential election, in line with our approach towards historical U.S. presidential elections. So, that's, uh, that's, that's pretty, uh, that's pretty significant. Um, yeah. I mean, could they even remove my video because it's even mentioning some of these words? I kind of worry about that. Maybe I shouldn't make this video at all. But I want to bring it to people's attention, these changes that, that YouTube is making. 
Now, there are a number of people who've already talked about this, and, I, and maybe some of you already know about this, but uh, I'm just trying to spread the information about Google's new community guidelines. So, for example, we will remove videos claiming a presidential candidate won the election due to widespread software glitches or counting errors. Now that one there, you know, I, I can understand that because there is no proof that, uh, that that occurred. I mean, there's proof that the software can be manipulated, but that doesn't mean it was manipulated, and that's not proof that it was manipulated. There's, there's no proof of that. We will begin enforcing this policy today and will ramp up in the weeks to come. As always, news coverage and commentary on these issues can remain on our site if there's sufficient education, documentary, scientific, or artistic context. Well, how is that to be proven? Especially when it's algorithms that are, that are flagging the content. And another thing that I'm wondering about too is when this content gets flagged and when these videos get removed, is it putting a strike against someone's channel or is it just removing this content? Hard to say. I mean, as you probably are well aware of, three strikes and you're out. So connecting people to authoritative information. While only a small portion of watch time is election related content, YouTube continues to be an important source of election news. On average, 88% of the videos in top 10 search results related to elections came from authoritative news sources. Amongst the rest are things like newsy late night shows, creator videos, and commentary. Well, that's, I, I don't really know about th this part. You know, is that really true? I mean, when... You, for quite a while it's been on YouTube, it's been this, if you search for any subject that could be covered by mainstream media, the search results will be just be pages and pages and pages of mainstream news sources. You know, television, you know, uh, sources that are associated with television channels. You know, I, it's really hard. I mean, even if you try to use some extensions that are out there to try to remove those sources, there, there's so many more, it's, it's just endless, you know? And the most viewed channels and videos are from news channels like NBC and CBS. Well, yes, of course, because that's, that's what you've, you've forced it into being. You know, you've forced that issue. We also showed information panels linking both to Google's election feature or results feature, which sources election results from the Associated Press and to the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency's rumor control page for debunk debunking information integrity misinformation. Did I say that right? Election integrity misinformation. Alongside these and over 200,000 other election-related videos. Collectively, these information panels have been shown over 4.5 billion times. Starting today, we will update this information panel, linking to the 2020 Electoral College results page from the, the Office of the Federal Register, noting that as of December 8th, states have certified presidential election results, with Joe Biden as the president-elect. It will also continue to include a link to uh, CISA, explaining that states certify results after ensuring ballots are properly counted and correcting irregularities and errors. And I, I don't really need to show the, the page much more, but you, you get the idea. Um... They're wanting to cram authoritative sources at our faces even more. And they're wanting to ban people, well, ban videos. And if you get three strikes and you're out, you know, uh, that talk about the election in alternative ways. 
that's quite unfortunate because, again, as I said earlier in this video, if you remove that stuff from these mainstream websites and people don't see these things sufficiently talked about to where people can have decent arguments against them, then they'll just stew on these alternative uh, tech platforms. They'll just stew about it. And they'll think they're right, and they'll be in their little information bubbles. And that's quite unfortunate. So, again, you know, Google can do with their sites what they want, but I don't have to like it, and I don't have to condone it, and I don't have to promote it. I think it's awful. But that's the way things are now, and this is going to affect a lot of channels. I, I Again, I wonder whether this is going to affect even people wanting to post little clips of speeches from Trump. How far are they going to go? It, it seems YouTube is the most draconian in these rules out of any of the other tech platforms. We'll just have to see how this goes, won't we?